Vulnerability is everything. All we're trying to do is get other people to open themselves up such that we can establish genuine connection. And that worked. Still didn't feel too unreasonable. Then one day, I was clearing a table's appetizers, and I overheard them saying they were from Europe. It was a, a table of four. And it was their last meal in New York. They were going to the airport from the restaurant. And I overheard them say, oh my gosh, we've been to, and they named all the best restaurants in New York. We've been to Per Se and Danielle and Le Bernardin and Momofuku and now Le Madison Park. The only thing we haven't had is a dirty water hot dog from a street cart. And I had one of those moments, you know, those like light bulb moments from a cartoon. I ran out to the front of the restaurant. There was a hot dog cart there run by a guy named Abraham. Um, I knew his name because I actually love a dirty water hot dog from a street cart in New York. And I got a hot dog. Brought it back to the kitchen. Another challenging conversation with the chef. <laughs> Eventually convinced him. I just had to keep on saying, unreasonable hospitality. We agreed on this. Come on. I had him cut it up into four perfect pieces. Put each one down on four plates. A little canal of sauerkraut, a canal of relish, a swoosh of mustard, a swoosh of ketchup. And before their dry-aged Muscovy duck with honey and lavender, which had taken years to perfect the recipe of and weeks to prepare, I went out there and put down their dirty water hot dog on their table and said, I don't want you to go home with any culinary regrets. Guys, they freaked the F out. At that point in my career, I had served literally millions of dollars worth of food and hundreds and hundreds and hun thousands of people, and I've never seen anyone react like that. One of the things I've always tried to do, you know, with baseball players, when they have a bad game, they always go to the tapes to see what they did wrong so they can try to do those things better. What they don't do often enough is go to the tapes when they've had a good game to see what they did well so they can make sure to do those things again. In that moment, I said, hold on, we are on to something. Let's systemize it. Now, it was one thing to run out to the street corner and get a hot dog. It was right there. We were doing one thing for one table that night. But I realized if we were going to try to do things like that for our guests more often, we needed to actually have people on the team to do that. So I hired someone to join the team who had no responsibilities in the restaurant except to bring crazy ideas to life. I called that person the dream weaver. A, because it kind of made sense. B, because that's the song by Gary Wright that I was listening to the first time I French kissed a girl. <laughs> and I sat down with the entire team. I told them about the hot dog story, and I said, I want to do these kinds of things for everyone. I have this thing, I call it the rule of 95-5. If you manage your money like a crazy person 95% of the time, you've earned the right to spend 5% of it foolishly. But I put foolish in quotes because it's actually that 5% that results in some of the memories that will last forever. In the months that followed, it became electric. One table, um, we overheard the, the dad saying, that he'd forgotten to buy a teddy bear for his kid at home. The Dreamweavers went into the back, they were seamstresses as well, they took kitchen towels and actually made a teddy bear on the spot and gave it to him. Um, we overheard a family of four uh, from Spain, parents, two kids, it was snowing, we had these big windows, they could see the snow, say that it was the first time their kids had seen snow. At nine o'clock on a Saturday night, the Dreamweavers found a store that was still open selling sleds. They went and bought them. When they finished their meal, they were greeted with an SUV with sleds in the back to take them to Central Park to go sledding. Um, there was a guest who someone told us in advance of their meal that the girl was obsessed, like unhealthy obsession with Christmas. We took them on a tour to the kitchen. When they came back, we had a little model train set on their table with caviar on one of the trains. Um, one guy, early in the meal, said he loved mariachi, and it just so happened that one of our busboys was friends with a mariachi band. We called them. They ran into the restaurant. We brought them on a kitchen tour, and out of the kitchen, like, walk-in refrigerator came a full-on mariachi band to perform for them. <laughs> or a couple had their beach vacation for their honeymoon canceled because of inclement weather. They ended up in our restaurant. We sent our handyman to the Home Depot down the road 
got a few hundred pounds of sand. Our private dining room was not full that night, so we covered the entire floor in sand, put a kiddie pool, filled it with water, brought beach chairs up there, and served them Mai Tais for dessert. When that one happened, I was like, okay, that's unreasonable. <laughs> Here's the thing. I've never been a Grateful Dead guy, but I understand why people love the Grateful Dead so much. Because every single show they play is different. If you are at that show, you know that no one else will ever have the same experience you're having. But when you're in the service business, when you're in the customer service business, you can do that times a thousand. Because in our restaurant, not only were the experiences that people were having on a given night different than any one that anyone else would have, but every single table was having a different experience. Vayner Speakers.